Have you ever gone to buy paints and you didn't know what to choose, so you just grabbed the cheapest one and ended up disappointed? Me too! So I went out and got all of the acrylic paints that I could find at my local craft store, and I'm going to try them out, and we're going to test out the differences between each of these paints. I'm going to start with the Craft Smart, and for each of these paints we're going to test out the red, yellow, blue, and uh, black. And we're going to start with the cheapest one, which is Craft Smart. And I'm actually just using a paper plate today for my palette because I don't want to clean my my actual palette because that's a hassle. All right, so we're going to test these out on this Strathmore acrylic paper. Um, I really liked it. I did it for, I used it for my last piece, which is actually the Mary Cassatt reproduction from my last video. So what we're looking at is the consistency of the paint, the uh, reflectivity of the paint. Something big about acrylic paint is that because it's made of plastic, it can end up really shiny uh, when it dries. And so that's something to be, that's something to consider when you're an artist, if you want your finished result to be super shiny or not. And it looks like I'm getting a lot of paint, but this paint is actually very liquid. It's not thick at all. And it looks like it might actually run into each other a bit. And we'll see how it does. So we're going to start with one layer. Wow. Okay, so this has kind of a weird gel-like consistency, which is interesting. I used to paint with... I believe craft barrel craft paint when I was a kid. Whoa, that's dark. And it didn't feel like this. It, the craft barrel ones felt like, uh, or is it apple barrel? I don't remember the brand. Felt very, oops, okay, I messed up that last one. So let me try it again. Okay. So I'm not laying it on super thick. I'm just keeping it one layer for now and we'll do a couple of layers just to see what it looks like completely dry. Okay, the yellow is always the most translucent. I have yet to come across a yellow that is opaque. <laughs> All right, so this is our Craft Smart one layer. As you can see, it's very thin. It dries really fast. The black and the red, I think, are the most opaque but it's not shiny at all, which is great. All right, let's do our second layers. Not much of a change for blue, but it might look different once it's dry. Black. And red. And then we've got yellow. So, when you're painting with acrylics, you use water while you're painting. And everybody's uh, process is different. So it depends on your process, how much water you use. Uh, but obviously the water will thin out the paint. So the more water you use, the thinner your paint will be. All right, here is layer two of Craft Smart. Um, the blue and the yellow are definitely very transparent, or semi-transparent, really. But you can expect, you can always expect the blues and the yellows to be very, very opaque. So I'm going to wait for this to dry for a second. Okay, so Craft Smart Paint, I think, is... Pretty solid for the black and the red. If you're using it for painting on a panel or a canvas, I would recommend only using these two. Um, unless you want a very transparent look, uh, because they don't get very they don't get very dark. They don't get very full body. So next we're gonna do the artist's loft. So we've got red. 
and the brilliant yellow, brilliant blue, and ivory black. That is much thicker. It comes out in a blob rather than a puddle. And my expectations seeing that are that this paint is going to be thicker overall, probably for most of the colors. Let's see. Oh yeah, the blue is really thick. Wow, okay. I'm really wondering, I wonder if this one will be really shiny when it dries because it's so thick. It is very shiny coming out of the tube anyway. Also, I am putting down a lot of paint. Sorry if that bothers you. <laughs> okay, so we've got blue. And this is the artist loft. That looks pretty similar to the Liquitex that we'll see later. I'll show you, I'll show you in a bit. We've got black. Oh yeah, this is a shiny paint. And you know what I'm also noticing? Just right off the bat, with the artist loft, you see the texture of the paper through the paint, but with the Craft Smart, you don't at all. The Craft Smart dries very matte. But I'm wondering if that might change with multiple layers. We'll see. All right, so the red is very thin, which I feel like is also very typical. I feel like it's red, blue, and yellow that are pretty thin. Wow, that yellow is very brilliant. I'm actually really annoyed at myself for leaving that spot. So this is layer one. It's drying really matte with just one layer, and the colors are very vibrant. Time for layer two. My paintbrush is looking like a scraggly, a scraggly dog. Red. Ooh. The red is getting significantly darker with more layers. And the yellow. There isn't much difference of color with the yellow. But you can see how shiny it is with my light on it. I've decided to come a little closer so you can see a little better. So we've got Craft Smart and Artist's Loft. We can tell from the Craft Smart and the Artist's Loft that the Artist's Loft is definitely thicker overall than the Craft Smart, which is great because Artist's Loft is pretty uh, fairly priced. Next, we're gonna pull out our Liquitex. Liquitex is all over the painting aisle. It is seen as a higher quality brand, um, which is usually reflected in the price, for sure. It's definitely more expensive. I expect these to be pretty thick. These are like eensy weensy little bottles. Ooh. It is, uh, it's hard to see, but it is thicker than the Artist Loft. It feels thicker as I pour it. Whoa, the red is... Pressured. I mean, you can see just how kind of formed that ball is. It can give you a good idea of how thick the paint is. I know a lot of people don't really care about how thick it is, but sometimes that can really affect the different kinds of mediums you want to use, such as slow dry mediums or quick dry mediums, even faster drying mediums or texture mediums, or just texture you want to put in your in your piece and in general, or any multimedia, or sorry, or any mixed media you want to add. The Liquitex is very uniform. Let's start with layer one. 
and I am applying these layers with only the, the amount of water it takes to clean the brush. I'm not adding extra water. Again, you can see the texture of the paper through the paint and the other ones did end up drying very matte. You can barely see the texture. You can see the texture through the blue and the yellow, but you can't uh, feel the texture. It's very thick. This yellow is very brilliant. And now the red Liquitex. It's very translucent. And now in my experience, the Liquitex tends to dry very shiny when you have a lot of layers. Oops, I did blue instead of black, sorry. Especially with blues, reds, and yellows. It's interesting because they are the most translucent colors and more likely to need more layers if you want full colors, but they end up super shiny. And there's the black. We've got one layer down. I think it's very clear from this that you don't need a lot of layers of Liquitex to actually show a full body color. Comparing it to the two layers of the other ones, I mean, this blue, that's a lot of, that's very translucent. But the two layers of the artist's loft is almost exactly similar to the one layer of Liquitex. So that is a big difference between how thick a paint is, is how well it's gonna show on your canvas. Let's do the second layer. So layer two of the blue. I'm glad these ended up being very similar colors. Honestly, I think this ends, this is still lighter than the two layers of the artist's loft. And that is interesting. It could just have to do with the pigment of the paint. Cause this is brilliant blue and this is primary blue. This is PB153. And this is a mystery. I wonder if it's on the package. Let me see. Yeah, they don't list the number anywhere on the artist's loft, so it's kind of hard to tell if you're a seasoned artist, if there's like a specific uh, shade of blue that you want. It's a little harder to tell with artist's loft because they don't give put the numbers on at least these small bottles. I'm not entirely sure about the big bottles, I'll be honest. I don't use them. But looking at this, it dries so matte and so like brilliantly that I don't see a reason to not use it at all. Like that's great. So the last paint that we're gonna test out is Windsor and Newton. I recently started using Windsor and Newton. Um, I used to mainly use Liquitex and Liquitex did me well but it would dry so shiny that I just wanted to try something else. So I went with a pricier paint. Windsor Newton is definitely the most expensive. I noticed that it is very matte when it dries and it also has, it feels like a more robust paint. It feels more robust when you paint with it. Um, whereas the Liquitex felt very light when you used it. The Windsor and Newton feels heavy and uh, thick. This is a lot. Why am I putting out so much? I'm not using this. Let's see what it looks like applied compared to the others. I'm really interested to see what they look like all lined up next to each other. I wonder if we'll be able to tell a difference at all. Honestly, looking at them on this paper there really isn't much of a difference between these except for the craft smart blue is very very light and the liquitex red is very light but otherwise there isn't much of a difference okay let's start with yellow so it is a lot thicker on the paintbrush and it stays on the brush It is a little thicker on the paper, just laying down. It's harder to see when it's uh, still drying because it's shiny on the camera. But there is a lot more pigment here than on all of these combined. These are all very, very light. But that is very thick. Let's go with blue. This blue is going to be darker in shade uh, because I don't have a primary blue. I just have Windsor blue. 
but it does actually look very similar to these two, the two layers of these two. Uh, but the blue is definitely very light. You can see a lot of the canvas underneath it. All right, let's do red next. Okay, so the red is also very light, I would say. And like I said before, yellow, red, and blue are the lightest shades. They're always going to be the most translucent, uh, and they will always need more layers than just one. If you lay them on a canvas, on a white canvas, they'll show up the color you want them to, layer one. But if you're laying them on other colors, they are going to look completely different because they're basically going to be a translucent mask over whatever you have drawn. And that's just kind of how acrylics work. That's just what acrylics are. So black, I haven't used Winsor Newton black. I'll be completely honest. I had to go out and buy it because I prefer the Liquitex black. Really, I don't use enough black and so I just had Liquitex. Black, it seems, is pretty much the same on the board. I will say that Craft Smart and Liquitex Black dry a lot more matte than the Artist Loft. You can't see it because my camera isn't awesome, but the black is reflecting. Or actually, all of the Artist Loft is reflecting. Okay, and the Windsor Newton actually dried very quickly, so let's do a second layer. I've already still got black on my paintbrush, so I'll do black first. And we'll do yellow. Oh, there's a cat hair. Give me that. Oh my gosh. Well, that is just the caution of having cats when you paint. That yellow is so much more pigmented than the rest of them. It's really cool to have this palette out here like this because it shows such a difference. Okay, we've gone layer two of red. Good little layer there. And I am trying my best to keep the same thickness of layer so that we can keep this as accurate as possible. Okay, and then we've got blue. Okay. We'll just wait for that to dry. So, here's what I think. The Artist Loft is definitely shiny at just two coats. Um, the rest of them are very matte, which is really good. But I do wanna say that if you work with acrylics, if you put a lot of layers, it's gonna be shiny no matter what brand you use. Um, and the yellow, red, and blue are always going to be more translucent than your black um, or white. White is usually pretty thick too, but it depends. I believe I couldn't test it out because I don't have any toned paper, but it does depend on the brand. The Craft Smart White is very thin. The Artist Loft, Winsor Newton, and Liquitex Whites are pretty thick, so they're pretty good to use by themselves. Uh, but they will be translucent when you paint them. And then you use waters with acrylics and you can basically use acrylics like watercolors. You just use a lot of water, it makes it more translucent like this red. Um, and you use less water and it's very thick. I really like Winsor Newton for what I like to do. Uh, but I don't have the budget to try any like slow drying mediums or texture mediums or anything like that But I really like the paint as it is um, It doesn't dry super shiny and it has such a Solid body that it's easier to mix the colors that I want. I like to use these colors only I barely use black even I like to use red yellow and blue because I'm practicing color theory and what each color does when you add it to each other but it is very pricey it is very expensive compared to the rest of them ultimately though i think that price could be the sole factor to choosing your paint i think that they're all fairly similar i it would just be up to your personal preference and what you were working on 
I would definitely say use your craft smart on cardboard or clay or uh, paper. It would look great on paper, um, but I wouldn't use it for a canvas because it's so thin. The rest of these though are so similar that there probably wouldn't be any difference in what you use. I would say I recommend Winsor Newton because it dries so matte. It's very, very matte and thick. But if it's too expensive, I would honestly go Artist Loft over Liquitex just because Liquitex is so, like this red is so light. Maybe do like Liquitex blue, black, and yellow, but Artist Loft red, because this red is so light. Well, that's all that I have for you. Um, I hope this was helpful and it helped you learn a little bit about what acrylic paint looks like applied. Um, if there are more brands of paints or different types of paints that you want me to try out and uh, showcase, definitely let me know. Or if there are any mediums you want uh, me to show, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.